Hi viewer, this is the Earth. Viewer, Earth, Earth viewer. There are 3.5 trillion ish bees on Earth. They're very important. Let's kill all of them in the name of science and fast forward a few decades to see what happens. Notice how the world has ended. What just happened? The world has ended. Why? The bees died. The bees collect nectar. Uh, okay. But in the process, they pollinate. They get covered in pollen and then nate. That's not a word. They fly to other flowers for more nectar and happen to spread the pollen, helping the plant make adorable baby flowers. Nate is shorter. Some other critters can pollen and nate, but bees mastered the craft. They pollinate most flowering plants and a third of our food crops. Without them, the world would end because of wars over resource scarcity. But first, a bunch of cool stuff would die. Cool, cool stuff, stuff that, that dies. dies. Bee eater. Bee wolf. Honey Badger Varroa Destructor Hi, welcome back to Earth. Remember those 3.5 trillion uh. bees? They were very important, and we killed all of them. When we killed all of them, we decimated the food chain they are part of. Over the next few decades, 100,000 plant and 10,000 animal species will be threatened with extinction due to less bees causing less other stuff. Wow, that's a lot of less stuff. Thank God this widespread devastation has no effect on agriculture and human society. Meet Joe. Joe is a farmer. He lives in Iowa. He's a fantastic role model. Coincidentally, he subscribed. Anyway, Joe farms corn, which is entirely wind pollinated. Meet Joey. Joey is a farmer. He lives in Idaho with his four children and the love of his life, a second-hand John Deere 8R410 row crop tractor. Joey farms buckwheat, which along with broccoli, mangoes, mustard, low crop, papayas, and three quarters of major commercial food crops are dependent on bee pollination. Sadly, the bees are too busy being dead to pollinate, so the crops become dependent on hope and prayer, neither of which are good pollinators. The world has now lost nearly half a trillion dollars worth of annual crop production, and fruits, veg, beans, and particularly almonds are now semi-luxury items, alfalfa and clover, important livestock feeds, are also bee pollinated, meaning they become scarce and shoot up in price, so feeding livestock costs more. This means when Joey leaves to get milk, never to return, he is unable to buy any, because meat and dairy products have shot up in price. Joey is forced to sell his beautiful row crop tractor to survive. He is unable to afford things like fruit, most veg, and only really eats grains and rice. As a result, he has developed vitamin A, C, and E deficiencies, and lacks some minerals like potassium. But he's not alone. Across the states, agriculture is changing. Washington, Michigan, and Oregon have taken blows to their apple, cherry, and other berry exports from the lack of nating of pollen. The Midwest is... fine. They're in the corn belt because they grow belts. Wait, no, corn. Corn is wind pollinated, so wind can nate the corn pollen. F the corn pollen, just fine. Joe is hanging in there. In Florida, an alligator just beat everyone in a bar at an arm wrestling championship. You think it's because the alligator is much stronger than a human, but alligators aren't capable of such delicate body movements and mainly have fast twitch muscle fibers that would tire and halve in strength within six to seven consecutive matches. The actual reason is because everyone in the bar has fatigue and anemia, because everyone in the bar has scurvy. Like they're pirates or something. This is thanks to the collapse of the Floridian citrus industry, a loss of $220 million worth of oranges, grapefruits, and other vital vitamin C sources. Alligators, along with most animals, synthesize their own vitamin C, so don't develop scurvy. Like they're pirates or something. But California has been hit the worst. It contributes 13% of US agricultural GDP, consisting of bee pollinated foods like avocados and melons. But its biggest loss is the almond industry's collapse, completely reliant on bee pollination, which used to rake in 4 billion bucks in exports and put 11 billion towards the state's economy, comparable to the annual output of Bhutan and Montenegro. Oh, yeah, how's the rest of the world doing? Yeah. In Europe, Ukraine and Russia are making bread because they grow a lot of wheat, which doesn't need bees. Spain, Italy and the Balkans grow a lot of fruit, meaning they're growing a lot less fruit now and making a lot less money. This goes for the Middle East too, and the Maghreb region. The rest of Africa is doing even worse, since the cash crops are failing. In South America, there's this big patch of green that we hurt the feelings of, so it's throwing a big temper tantrum in the form of ecologic collapse. 
Across the planet, food and trade is crumbling into the ground, directly affecting $3 trillion worth of trade, causing nearly 3 billion people to go hungry. Oh well, at least not everyone dies. This is the Mekong River. It flows through China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Laos, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. That's nine countries. Wait, no, six. There's a lot of farms here for mangoes and other bee-pollinated fruit stuff. But all the bees died, so they switched to rice. But rice has a problem. Rice is much less valuable than the fruit stuff they used to grow, so the farms are running out of money. No problem, they just plant more rice to compensate. Rice has another problem. It uses much more water. They're running out of water. Uh-oh. The upstream nations like China and Laos immediately have the geographic advantage, so start using dams to hoard water so they can grow enough rice. Not only do downstream nations now have less water to irrigate with, but the river narrows and the riverbanks degrade, so there's less fish to be caught by the fishermen. Now the 65 million people reliant on the lower Mekong are being starved, facing water, rice, and fish shortages on top of the fruit failing. The six countries work things out and live happily ever after. War. Welcome to India and Pakistan. They aren't friends. When the bees died, their cotton, fruit, veg, and spices all failed. So they take a page from their southeastern neighbors and plant rice. But rice has a problem. Vine will plant more. Rice has another problem. Vine will use more rivers, says India. Let's use the Brahmaputra and the Ganga. Yeah, there's a lot of us. Let's use the Indus too. Hey, says Pakistan from downstream. Menacingly. We use that one too. In fact, 240 million of us do. Over 90% of our population. We're just gonna build some dams, says India. War. Let's go to Mexico. In Mexico, they used to grow avocados, tomatoes, and a lot more bee pollinated foodos. Now they farm a lot of corn. Shout out, Joe. But some people are in financial ruin because their farms failed, so they migrate to the States. A lot more follow. Hey, stop that, says the US, restricting and militarizing borders. But it doesn't do anything apart from heat things up with Mexico, so they panic, blame China, and send $5 trillion to Israel. In the Middle East, Egypt is upset at Ethiopia and Sudan because they're tightening their grip around the River Nile, which shapes the livelihoods of half a billion people. Nearby, everyone's arguing over the Tigris-Euphrates, two more mega-important rivers. And far by, there's a lot more rivers that a lot more people are arguing over. And suddenly, the whole earth works things out and lives happily ever after. Wow, bees are really important. Thank God none of this is really happening.